I am very proud of Riverview. It's a great, great project. I love the building. It was, it's, certainly will be one of my favorites as my career ends. It will always be right at the top of the list. My name is Ellen Lucan. I'm with Lucan Architecture, and we were the architects hired to renovate Riverview. My first impression of being asked to work on Riverview, I was thrilled. I had worked with Steve Ludwig before on a Lawrence Hall project on campus here. So he and I had done, done a you know, good collaborative job on that. So I came up and toured the building and liked it. It's a beautiful old building, had a lot of history to it. It was on the National Register of Historic Places. And um, once he told me it had a ghost, I was thrilled. So I embraced it at that point. Riverview was built originally for the teacher's college, and it was a place where they taught teachers to teach. They ran a school out of here from, I think it was first grade through 10th grade was the age period of students going here. So if you look in the pictures, you'll see varying age group of uh, students. You can tell that, you know, obviously they had reading and writing. There are, you know, old um, utensils you can kind of see and things like that. They did scripted um, writing on the chalkboards that you'll see. They also ran a newspaper in here. The original construction drawings are dated 1911 to 1912. Clarence Johnston was the architect. His style here is Georgian revival style for the exterior, so that is uh, evidenced by the gable roofs, circle windows in those end gables, the decorative cornice with the dentaling, that's the little in and out squares on it. And then the entrance, the kind of um, Federalist style entrance, so that would be some of the key features of that. Riverview was nominated to the uh, National Register of Historic Places, so the U.S. Department uh, of Interior's uh, National Park Service list. And it was nominated because it was the first uh, model laboratory teaching school in the state of Minnesota and also west of the Mississippi. And if you look out the river, the Mississippi is pretty close, but we're the first one west. So that's its designation on the National Register is actually for its use, not for its exterior, which everybody, of course, kind of assumes that because it's a Clarence Johnston building, it was the reason why, but it really was the use of the building. Uh, SHPO stands for State Historic Preservation Office, and they are the overseer of the renovation. There's a set of guidelines that we follow for doing historic buildings. And um, so they, we had meetings, a meeting with them to agree to the renovation concept for this building. And so we established a hierarchy of what was important. Um, first area being the public hallways and the Grand Central Stair, second being the classrooms, third being other public areas like the general office or conference rooms, things like that, and then last being the offices. And in that hierarchy, that's how we uh, chose to spend our dollars for the project and where we spent our time. When you have an old building like this, they're not really built for what we do with modern buildings in terms of ventilation systems, networking, um, electrical systems, uh, lighting, any of that. So how do you hide and put all that ventilation in, in a historic building and not make it visible? We as an architect just always apply green principles to all our projects that we do. So Riverview is actually a very green building. I don't think anybody really is aware of it, but a renovation, just a renovation alone is a green thing because you've eliminated a lot of um, mass in landfills by not tearing this building down. But all our mechanical systems, our lighting, things like that, we use um, the most energy efficient equipment that's out there. By just replacing the windows, we have insulated glass with low E coating and everything is you know, designed to you know, really improve the performance of the building. 
It certainly is a connection with your past. It, you know, it's a connection on an individual level, and it's a connection on a city level or a campus level. If everything is new, there's no history to it, there's no tradition to it, I think it doesn't seem to have the value as an old building does. It doesn't have that, um, it's an intangible kind of thing. I'm standing here in front of Riverview Hall at St. Cloud State University. Behind me is an excellent example of Georgian architecture. There are many features to notice. For one, the brick, that's all the original brick on the building. If we needed to fix one, we salvaged the brick from another location on the building. Um, the windows are double hung windows. Those have been replaced, all except the two or the four circle windows in the end gables. Um, I think you can see better the H plan. Um, if you look to my right, you can see where the leg of the building stands out, and that is the H of the building. Um, in the top of that gable is the circle window. Um, behind me is the main entrance to the building. It is um, granite that is also from a quarry here in the St. Cloud area. So I'd like to invite you inside and we'll take you on a tour of the building. floor I'd like to point out a few features I think that are important. These are the five panel wood doors. Um, this is the veneered section that um, we had a repair. Um, if you'll notice on the doors, this is hardware. This is not the original hardware on these doors. We replaced it all. And one of the unique things in the building, this hardware is set at different heights on different doors. I think it's reflective of the different height of the students that use these classrooms. Um, if you look up, you'll see there's a transom. This let natural light from the classrooms into the hallway, because it's a long hallway. And those were reactivated as part of the renovation. They were not, um, they were blanked off and were kind of invisible piece of um, history that we found. So in looking up here, you'll see the crown molding. The crown molding is painted. It's a very pretty decorative element. And if you can look down the hallway here, you'll notice one single light in the middle of that section in front of the stair. I just want to point out that this entire hallway only had three lights. That was a replica of one of them. And so the lighting levels here were very low. What you see on the side in sconces are lights that we had to add to meet current lighting standards for the building. So when looking at the stair, you'll notice that they are framed with a series of columns that are wood, they're veneered, they're hollow, but it's a wood veneered column that is a decorative element across this opening. And that frames the stair on all the floors. floor. We're right at the Grand Central Stair. This is the first thing you see when you walk in the building. And the, I think the first thing you notice is the grandfather clock. That has been here since 1911. And it is um, in all the early photos and it's a beautiful clock. It was restored as part of our renovation and here to stay. We have special permission from the fire marshal to leave it. So you'll notice behind the clock, there's a grill of a kind of a decorative pattern. That's actually a ventilation grill that we have added to the building. Behind that is the return air duct system of the entire uh, ventilation system for the building. So then if you look at the steps, these are stone steps, and you'll see that they're worn by many a foot walking up and down them. And those are the original stone steps of the building. We've kept them just like they are. The handrails, all of that is allowed to stay. We have an ex exclusion um, for being a historic building. We're allowed to keep this in its original condition and um, waive some of the requirements under current codes. So let's move to the second floor and I'll point out a couple other things. Coming up to second floor, and if you look above me, you'll notice there are three light wells. 
Those light wells were original to the building and they were reactivated in two parts. The first part was as part of us with the re-roofing project. We put in skylights on the roof and then as part of the renovation, we opened up the glass in the lower part there. So that glass has got two layers of glass, one above and one below it, to protect it. The top one insulates it from the weather and the bottom one protects people from walking under it if it were to break. Now, if you go to my left here, you'll notice there's another ventilation grill in the ceiling. That's another example of a return air system in the building and how we tried to conceal it in the system of the buildings. And then below that is a bench. You'll notice there are replicated benches in the hallways. Those are for students to sit on. We don't think those are original in the way the building was originally furnished, but they certainly make it better than students sitting on the floor. We're in the attic penthouse now. To my left is an original wood column that supports the roof. If you look down the aisle here, you'll see a series of red beams. Those span the hallway below and they bear on the two side walls, those are bearing walls. Behind me, those support the weight of the air handling unit. And as that returns into the floor, that connects to those ventilation grills that are in the ceiling that I pointed out earlier on second floor. So we're right under, we're right in the middle of the building and we're right under the cupola. It's directly above you. And to my right here is one of the light well accesses there along this wall. We're here in the attic of Riverview. This is the highest point in the building. If you look around, you'll see the roof structure, the wood rafters, the decking that form the gable roofs on the outside. Over my left shoulder is the penthouse. I think you can see how it's sandwiched in there in the top gable in the center of the building that houses the two mechanical air handling units that service the whole building. And then to my right and left, um, there are the two circle windows that I had pointed out that are the original windows on the building. That's where we found out that the building windows were originally red. And those have been totally restored and in keeping with SHPO guidelines. Then uh, the other thing I want to do up here while I'm here, um, when I found out there was a ghost here, I introduced myself and I named the Riverview Ghost RG, not knowing if it was male or female. And I would come on weekends and after hours and doing investigative work to uh, prepare documents for the restoration. And I would tell RG, I'm back, or RG, I'm here. Or when they started construction, I told RG to t hide. And I actually told him to hide in this part of the building so that um, no one would bother him and he was the safest and less um, involved in the restoration that happened. So anyway, I'm here today to tell RG he can have his building back. It's all his, it's all done. So we're here in a modern classroom. This is what I call a 2010 classroom. There are three things to notice, acoustics, lighting, and technology. And those are the important features of what modernizes the classroom over our 1911 classroom. So if you look at the ceiling, You'll see there's an acoustical tile ceiling. You'll see grills for mechanical systems, projectors, cameras, a higher level of lighting than you would see in the old classrooms. And uh, we've held the ceiling back from the outer edge. That was a historic agreement with SHPO. They wanted people to see the original plaster ceilings to know how high the rooms really were. Behind that is a maze of conduits and wires and ductwork and everything else that we screen out from the classroom. So as you look forward, you'll see the smart council. That's a smart classroom council, typical of all the university classrooms. We were allowed to de uh, detail that in a manner that was a little more historically compatible to the building. That's why it's stained rather than has a plastic laminate veneer on it. And then if you look at the floor, this is carpeting. This carpet has been laid loose in a manner that does not hurt the wood floor that's underneath it. So if you step on a little bit, it'll squeak. But if they pull it up and decide to refinish the wood floors in the future, they're there and protected. So we're here in another 2010 classroom, but this one is a little different. This one has the historic character of the original building. Everything in this room is original. It's the only room in the whole building that has all original parts. So if you look around, you'll see wood wainscoting, you'll see wood chair rails, you'll see the wood on the windows, that's all original. The chalkboards, the chalkboards are at the different heights, those are in here as the room was surrounded in chalkboards. 
The different height tells you they used children of different ages took classes in here. So I mentioned this was a 2010 classroom. This room has all the modern technologies of the room, previous room we saw. If you look up at the ceiling, you'll notice all the ductwork, all the piping, all the wiring. You'll notice lighting, projectors, projection screens, all of it. We chose to use a desk that is a replica of the time period, where the old desks in the building appear from the photos to be sled-based desks, meaning that the chair of the person ahead of you was attached to the desk that was there. Many of you probably had classes in some of those. This room, we had an agreement with SHPO. We would take one room to demonstrate what really changed from 1911 to 2010. So this is that room that we chose to do that in. So the one missing piece of modernization is acoustics. There is no acoustical ceiling in here, and there's no carpet on the floor. And that is, uh, makes this a little livelier classroom, but it is the most original that's here. We're standing now in the 1911 classroom. This room is replicated to match the photograph on the wall behind me. This is our gym room in the building, and uh, it's a real nice little piece of history here. So you'll see the old classrooms are way more austere than our newer ones. And when you think of acoustics, lighting, and technology, the acoustics are very poor. The floor is a hardwood floor. This is the original floor. And the ceiling, um, there is no acoustic treatment. And if you look at the lighting, there's only six lights up there. That combined with the exterior windows formed all the lighting that was available at that time. The other major missing piece is technology. There is nothing here. All they had to work with was chalk, pencils, maybe pens, papers. Those were their teaching tools. There were no monitors, smart classrooms, or any of that. So in building out the room, we've tried to teach, treat it like a museum. So we have some smaller tables and chairs that you will see in the photograph. That's what they used, kind of baby Windsors. And we put larger scale ones in here for adults to be able to use. There are a number of accessories around the room. Uh, some of them have come from the Alumni Center attic. But the spinning wheel is actually in that photo. That was a teaching aid. There's a trophy here from the teacher college that actually was in uh, an award they had won at some time. So we've had fun kind of finding things around the university, and I welcome everyone to visit here. It just is nice to have something that's just a little special that isn't typical of anywhere else or any other project, and, and I'll remember that for a long time. <laughs>